So International Rugby League on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Pictures coming to you live from Port Moresby, and it is the Cormals who will be out to inflict damage on the scoreboard and on the playing field. Move together, lock in a marker. Valentine Richard, his international debut this afternoon. Very inexperienced front row, although you wouldn't say the same about this man, Jack DeBellin. Man, what a boost for PNG having a player of his calibre in. And now Dan Russell, who had a, a good end of the season for St George of the Wara. Rimbu with a pick up and run, and the referee might have uh, detected something here. We've got yeah, a player yeah. down in back play, and play <coughs> has been back. stopped. In fact, it's Arona, a Tevin Arona, the halfback for the Cook Islands. He went low on a charging Dan Russell. Copped a hip or a knee, and he hasn't moved. See the trainers are out there. Big charge. Ooh. Just hits the hip of the elbow there. Yeah, I think the clear the elbow's just clipped him under the ear. Again, front on tackling, getting down low. Can lead to these sort of injuries. So while uh, Tevin Arona is assisted by the medical staff, a short break. It's a nasty one. The player's still down injured. And they're taking all care with him. He's not being moved at the moment, obviously, because he's not communicating. They'll be more concerned about potential neck injury or it's only precautionary until he can communicate with him. He feels fine and can actually move around. They won't actually move him there on the field. So that's Tevin Arona, the halfback uh, for the Cook Islands. Actually plays his rugby league in New Zealand with the Hornby Panthers in Christchurch. And you can see you know, the on-field staff asking for the stretcher. So what a wretched stroke of luck for this young man. And his third test for the Cook Islands and dropped quite the knock there by Dan Russell. Well, he could have got a dumb whammy. Probably copped a little elbow on the way went in, into the tackle and then hit his head on the ground on the way down and then Russell landed on him. All accidental. Players that have played against the Kummels always talk about uh, not so much the scoreboard but more the bumps and bruises the day after the game, Andrew. Can you attest to that? Yeah, it was always really physical. I can remember we played them up there one year in the early 2000s, maybe before a World Cup. And off the kickoff. They've kicked off to Gordon Tallis and Gordon, this is the raging bull base, when he just charged and this guy picked him up and spear tackled him oh. the green. Honestly, you get 12 weeks for it now. And every time Gordon got the ball, they would just tee off him. Pick so on the big guy. <laughs> oh, they just... Well, back then there wasn't much technique when they'd tackle, they'd just dive. Dive at your knees or just cut you in half. So physical. And Gus, the inclusion of the, the PNG Hunters in the Queensland Cup competition has been a, an enormous boost for rugby league in terms of uh, increasing the professionalism and the standard of the game across the country. Yeah, well, there was a, there was a group in PNG at the time and around the, the Prime Minister at the time that were looking at an NRL bid. They saw NRL as a way to help their nation come together. Uh, as I've explained many times, it's a, a unique country. Um, there are 10 million people in PNG, but there are only about 400,000 who live in the capital, Port Moresby. Mm -hmm. Most of them live in tribes and villages right throughout the island. And uh, they saw rugby league and a rugby league franchise as a way of bringing the country together and helping the kids get to schools and get educated. And uh, so it was very important to them. And, um, 
you know, rugby league up there is is so important for the future of the country. So the PNG Hunters getting back into the Queensland Cup was part of a 20 or 30 year plan as part of their bid um, to prove to Australia and to prove to themselves that they could host these games, they could develop talent and hopefully have an NRL franchise one day that the whole country would get behind. So Tevin Arona will be the help from the field here and we'll be able to resume the battle shortly. We wish him all the best. Earlier result, you might have seen that uh, brought to you as part of this double header, 26 points to 12. Victory for Samoa over uh, Fiji. If you want to see some collisions, watch a replay of that one. Mm. I've never seen as many big hits in 70 minutes of football as what we saw in this game here today. It was really physical. For Samoa, acquitted themselves a very respect. Respectively, last night against the Kangaroos, a victory pretty comfortably on the scoreboard for Australia. But they were more than competitive, and then the, the Samoan women's outfit have uh, achieved a victory. So Arona comes from the field. Yeah, I'm sure he's OK. He's, he's now moving everything, but that's, that's more precautionary. Uh, the major concern is the concussion, but if you're not communicating, they just want to make sure that they're not moving you if you have any other injury problems. But... He appeared to be moving well, so let's hope uh, there's a full recovery there. It's all precautionary. So play resumes. Johnston into acting half, and now the captain, Kyle Labert. With a high kick, which is fielded by Essam Ioka. Plays his football with the Western Clydesdales, also as part of the Queensland Cup. Now, Isan Masters. He's captain the Cook Islands previously. His seventh test this afternoon. Former Tiger, former Cowboy, former Titan. Out together, behind the line. Now playing with Huddersfield in the UK. Makatoa playing it past the 20. Stand now, here and hold again. Wait. Go for. And now Zane Tedovano. Played in two grand finals. I mentioned the, uh, the victory for the Roosters, but played in a a losing grand final with the Panthers as the Cook Islands shift here. And the kick bounces very kindly for Alex Johnston, who is given quite the reception by the local PNG fans. And uh, Morgan now. Over the halfway, Rimbo with a pass to uh, Kapinias. His second test for the Kummels this afternoon. Now De Bellin into the line, finds Lachlan Lamb and Johnston. We know he's a more than proficient fullback. He's spent a lot of time at fullback throughout his NRL career. Big in for the, the Kummels with Jack De Bellin. De Bellin for the Kummels. He'll play that link role in the middle of the field. Now Labert. Oh, he got clipped high. That was the last tackle as well. Another injury here. The Cook Islanders. Kyle Labert. I thought he was really good against the Prime Minister's 13 a couple of weeks ago. He's a handy player. Doesn't that tell I think that's Makahisi Makatoa. Yeah. Just getting some feeling back in the arm. So fifth tackle penalty. This has been a very cumbersome start to the game. So we're at full set of six coming for PNG. They're going to ignore the penalty goal and they will march on. Juda Rimbu. Away to Valentine Richard. Tackled strongly on the Cook Islands 10 metre line. De Bellin again, plenty of involvement early. Lockie Lamb and Jacob Arlick. The Titans player, they try with the power play, the ball in one hand. He's a giant man, Valentine Richard, but in fact he's bobbled it into the defence. No, he was held up over the line. Just wait, just wait. On the line, Dave. 
Makatau, he looks in all sorts. Move now! Dan Russell. Take the line, that's it, hold. Rimble. Duck dies to the line and probably got there. The fans think he's over. He's, a, he's turned on a post-try celebration, but the referee doesn't think he has scored. Yeah, he might have had a couple of goes at this. Didn't look all that clean. But the head on camera will show us. Referee not impressed. Down he goes. Yeah. I like it. I think it's momentum. I think he's there fair enough. But the fact that the ball's hit the ground before the line, they don't like that. Yeah, yeah, his head and shoulders effort. are over the line anyway. Like he's... I think the double movement interpretation needs to change. Oh, his body's over the line. Yeah, he is. It's momentum. But they don't like it when the ball touches the ground and then gets promoted towards the goal line. I don't know how he stops getting into the end goal. But his other, they're all in the end goal. Everything's, every part of his torso is in the end goal. Really strong at a dummy half. Mm. There's a PNG dummy half who's playing in England in the Super League. Edwin Mbappe, mm -hmm. if I pronounce that correctly. I think he signed with the Dragons. He's an exciting player. Lightning at a dummy half. Maybe a, oh, ball hasn't gone oh, out. Oh, goodness. Well, we saw, we showcased that breeze. Uh, with the, the flag and nearly blowing off the, the flagpole before the game, it might have just got a little bit stronger if that kicks anything to go by. Off the ball now, back to me. Make sure you pick the ball up. Here's De Bellin, runs a long way before he meets the defence, then Takarangi with a good shot. Richard stopped on the uh, Cook Islands 10 metre line. He's had a stack of ball here, Jack De Bellin. Ball spews out the back, Johnston. Fires a pass away to Lamb. They've got some numbers out here. This is Zach Labert, who's been impressive for the Cowboys throughout the season. And he runs towards the line and he's stopped in a desperate tackle. Play number four here. Ominous signs for the Cook Islands. Valentine Richard can't get there. Well, they're certainly stoic, aren't they? Stay square. Hold. Hold. Play the balls up here where you tackle. Just wait now. Wait on the line. Last tackle. Go. Labor for Lamb. Thinks towards the goal line and it, uh, it bobbled off legs and it's cleaned up there by Isan Masters and there is a penalty. That's some encouraging defence there from the Cook Islands, isn't it? PNG have had three sets of six on their line and they've managed to hold them out. Now they get a penalty. The first thing his teammates will be saying is, please kick it out. The breeze obviously fooled him in the first kick. On the 30, front foot on the line. Hold front foot. Hold that, did Jack? Go. Up now, Dan, get it square. Hold. Go on. Move together, get square. Hold. Go two. Through the hands and out to this right-hand side with Takarangi playing at 5-8 this afternoon. And the two Masters boys out of the back line for the Cook Islands, Isan and also his brother Stephen. One of seven uh, players Isan Masters with NRL experience. Here's Pride Peterson the Robati, a veteran of Queensland Cup Rugby League. Nice pass. And it's Morgan. Who's surrounded in the defence? Roderick ties there Jack in Get four. Square. Jack DeBellin in 13. Jack, Nothing late here. Here's Takarangi. Beat the first attempt to at tackle. And he's still going here. He might have run behind his own man, I think. Yeah, that's obstruction. He's always been a talented player, Brad Takarangi. Played a bit of centre, played back row, played front row. Obviously, their most experienced player here today. He'll play close to the game. He's playing at 5'8", but you can see he's still got that skill and footwork and good hands. 
It'd be a handful playing for the Dapto Canaries, which is where he's playing his football now. Yes. Well, how about, how about the breeze? The Cook Islands can barely find the line. That one's that one's travelled miles off the boot. This is a 20-point wind, just about. But no joy on the scoreboard as yet for PNG. Up together, lock in a 37 kilometre wind gusts. Nearly 30 degrees and up near 80% humidity. Most trying. Yeah, and they are predicting a few showers or during the afternoon. You get a little bit of that in Port Moresby at this time of year, late in the evenings or as the day wears on. Now that's nice attacking football. And then a McDonald tried to negotiate a passage down the sideline. Great hustle there by the Cook Islands to cut him off. It's Rimbu and uh, Johnston. And out to Arlick. He slips a pass away. And a try to Zach Labor at the first of the afternoon to the Kummels. And the locals are loving it. A yeah, nice play by the big rangy back row on the left side. Arlick just hits and rolls and spins. And then frees up his centre. Zach Labor. A bit of class, Labor. Jacob Alec uh, with the Gold Coast Titans. He played with the Burley Bears this year. They played in the grand final of the Queensland Cup. And Jacob got his first grade debut with the club this season. Very, very skillful. Got good ball skills. And you can see here he's be able to spin out of some tackles and get an offload there to Labour, who gets the ball away. Ball from one side of the field across to the other. Here he is, big rangy kid, shows it out in front and just able to draw defenders and with the right arm push it out. Our coverage today comes courtesy of the local broadcasters up there, so we're watching the replays as they play them, not as we would normally see them, so you're seeing what we see. It was nice football just the same. Jacob Alec, big, tall, rangy kid. Got a future, this boy, I think. Handy back row, isn't it? He is. Alec and then Russell up. He was given an opportunity late in the year for the Dragons. And he did some good things for the Dragons. I think he might have signed a new contract for a couple of years with St George of the War, and we know Jack DeBellin and the quality he brings. Well, these two are enjoying themselves. They're like big Labert fans, both the Labert's, Zach and Kyle. They brought their own fan club. Yeah, I think it's Jacob's mother who is from PNG, mm -hmm. lives in Cairns. He looked like a player with a future as well. With the handful of opportunities he had in uh, NRL Rugby League this year. Zach Labor, only 21, played four games, scored three tries in those. And the wind affects that kick at goal. 4 0 PNG. Took a little while. They had all the ball down on the Cook Islands line, but eventually PNG have nailed the try. Look at that kickoff hang up in the breeze. It's like a hot air balloon. Oh, a head clash. Oh, not another one. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Got another bump. Very stop-start. The opening passages of this game, isn't it? We've had three serious injuries. Had to come forward to that with the, the chases coming down on him. That's not the man they want hurt either, Kyle Labert. Oh, yeah, bang. Head, head close. Oh, you can see it straight away just opens him up in the forehead. Clash of heads there with the 11, Zane Tedavano. Zane Tedavano has been out of rugby league for five months uh, until this afternoon. He, he had a, a minor stroke. This really? is his first game back, yeah. Really good fella, Zane Tedavano. Started the Newcastle Knights. 
Sounds like he's been around forever. Yeah. He'd be in his mid 30s, wouldn't he? As I said, won a comp with the uh, with the Chooks. He's about 32, 33. He's 32, I guess. And Newcastle Roosters at Penrith and plays at Leeds in the UK Super League now. I think he's recently moved back to Auckland. Okay. About looking for a career in rugby league. Probably around strength and conditioning and different aspects. Always known as a very, very good trainer, great discipline. Is Dan Russell playing the ball? Do you think there's some resemblance to Dylan Napa there? Have a look at him. Let's see if we can get in a bit of rhythm here. There's been a, a lot of stoppage. Both teams are looking to try and get a bit of rhythm going, I'd say. Carpinias. And now Nina McDonald, most experienced of the PNG players, his 15th test for the country today. And good scurry from Liam Horn, who's gone onto the field. Valentine Richard. Gee, they run hard, these two props, don't they? Played to Horn. And eventually uh, out to Rimbu, who might have moved into the halves here. There's a mistake out wide. It's picked up by Russell. And he won't get there this time. But they've got a full set of six. Russell right near the goal line and uh, great scurry, scurry again there by the Cook Islands. Carpinias nearly got over, but they, they got around and wrapped the ball up importantly. Lockie Lamb floats one over the top. Robert Darby for the pass. They rolled it forward. Oh, look good. Look fine out of the hands. Yeah, with that big breeze behind them, we've seen it affect the kicks. It will affect your long passes as well. Pretty confident Lamb threw this backwards, but the breeze just would have got hold of it. Taking it forward. Gives the impression the ball's gone forward. I think that's our backwards out of the hand. Mm. You can see the breeze there just grabs it. Well, the touchy you might have called there. He was right in line. It certainly floated forward, but that's not the... The, uh, the key indicator, if it goes back out of the hand, it's a legal pass. Had a great year in England this year, Lachlan Lamb. Of course, son of uh, Adrian Lamb, former Roosters and Queensland star. And his father coached Lee. They won the Challenge Cup. They won the Challenge, Challenge Cup, Cup, yeah. yeah. And at one stage there, Lachlan Lamb was voted the Player of the Month and his father was voted Coach of the Year mm. uh, in the English Super League, which had their grand final last night overnight. Uh, Wigan there, defeating Catalan. That's Mitchell Pearce's last game. Yeah. There was a few of them saying goodbye to the UK Super Three League together. in that game. Three. Very dour sort of contest. Is it 10-2? Was that the final score? 10-2. Yeah, only one try in the game. Catalan had two players sent to the sim bin at different times during the game, but there wasn't a lot of open football being played. Lachlan Lamb, he had a great season over there. Uh, I've always liked him as a player. He was used more as a utility at the Roosters. Help! He's only 25 back still, back isn't he? Yeah, dummy half, halfback, 5'8". A little bit of lock forward. I think he's an out-and-out out half. Now 15. Now, I know the Canberra Raiders were looking very seriously as him as a maybe a replacement for Jack White. And Lachlan's decided to stay in England, at least for another couple of years anyway. So McDonald sets up 15 from the line to Bell and here's Lamb. Leaves Johnston behind. Oh, beautiful hands. Lave it for Derby, who might have scored a couple of minutes ago, but it was a forward pass, but there's no doubt about that. Lovely attacking footy, and the Kummels in for try number two. You yeah, were talking about Lachlan Lamb and the class he's got. Watch this bullet pass. It's like he's playing out the back to a standard block play, but then he cuts out the guy at the back and throws it through the tunnel to his centre. Zach Labor just shows his class, catch and pass with a Russian defence coming at him. But once again, speaking about the class of Lachlan Lamb, I think you'll see a lot of that today. Jack DeBellin to Lachlan Lamb, and that's the creative players will be combining. The dangerous PNG, really dangerous. You see the ball here, Jack DeBellin, Lachlan Lamb, throws it through that tunnel ball. The middle class here from Zach Labert, and he puts over his winger Robert Derby. 
Yeah, you certainly might get a few today, Robert. They played next to each other for the Cowboys on a couple of occasions this year as well, both making their NRL debuts. Well, it's good thinking stuff. there by Lachlan Lamb because his previous passes, you know, went over the top and the breeze got hold of it was real forward. So this time he played earlier to his centre and allowed him to play the two-on-one rather than cutting out the centre and going straight to the winger. Nice, flat, direct pass, and as Andrew pointed out, behind one, across the face of another. Picks up his centre, her really nice quick hands lay, but and a good try for PNG. Gee, this is a tough going for the Cook Islands. A few mistakes are admittedly coming off their own line, but they're running into a, a, an epic breeze. And then they lost their halfback. Yeah. First set of six. 70% of the ball in favour of the uh, home nation this afternoon. 10-0. Up. Oh, it's out on the fall. Oh, that wasn't one of the options I was thinking about. Yeah, when, when it's a really strong breeze, any sort of missed kick, or if you get the ball going sideways and the breeze takes over, you've got no control over it. Doesn't matter how much you talk to it, the, the, breeze, the breeze just keeps it going. Now, look at this one. Oh, nearly blew it to cans. Oh, this is hard. This is this is hard work for the Cook Islands. Geez, pretty impressive. This bloke, Valentine Richard, lose the size of the legs. It's frightening, isn't it? Like his calves are that big, the socks don't go over. And here's Epel Carpinias. They do take some stopping. De Bellin, bit of class with a left foot step there, trying to find some space through the middle. Drag down by Masters, and the front roller will get the try he was denied earlier. It's Carpinias, oh no, the referee's not sure. It looked like he got there, oh, no he's, try. He's happy, the big man. I think he may have spilled his lollies. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> there must be a little bit of panic that goes through the front rower's mind when he's about to go over the line. Not panic, excitement. <laughs> Oh, oh. He's on his tippy toes. Oh. He's happy there. Well, he's got the ball there. There you go. He puts it down. I think when the ball hits the ground, it's the bobble. But he's got it down. Yeah, he's got it in his forearm and his bicep. Doesn't come, doesn't release from that grip. Big bicep. You know, it only releases when the, the, the ball hits the ground. I don't think he loses it before it hits the ground. Again, we're relying on the local broadcasters for the replays. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not sure where the video ref is today, where the bunker is. We're not, we're not hearing the, the bunker all that well. We're, we're picking up the PA. I'd be giving it a try, but I'd give everything a try. Yes. I'm happy with everything. Yeah. I'd make a great bunker official. Everyone would get a try. <laughs> Don't go. Who would you like to see in the bunker? I don't guess. Stevie, Didn't meet anyone else. Stevie Wonder would be good in there, or Mr. Magoo. Yeah. Sometimes right. a little side Mr. Magoo is in there, some of the decisions. And rolling forward, aren't they, PNG? Oh. Nothing's gone the way at all of the Cook Islands. Losing players, first set is him kicking out on the fall, not finding touch with penalties. All the possession has been with the PNG, 71% of possession. Yeah, these two teams met in the World Cup just 12 months ago over there in the UK. And, uh, been a number of changes to both sides. I think nine new players in each team uh, since that one. 
PNG won that game pretty comfortably by about 20 points from memory and have won the only three clashes between the two nations. Cook Islands have played in three World Cups over the last 20 odd years. And as we said before the show, Cook Islands is a, is a small nation. Only about 17 or 18,000 people actually live in the Cook Islands. There are more Cook Islands heritage people living in Australia than there are in the islands. It is a magnificent part of the world. I'm not sure if you've visited the Cook Islands. It is glorious. Kevin Iroh's the king over there, isn't he? He's living back there. 16 nil, Papua New Guinea leading the Cook Islands for the very first time. The NRL is heading to Vegas. Join us as Australia's most exciting sport, rugby league that is, is unleashed on the sports and entertainment capital. Rugby league live from Vegas. Tickets on sale now and they are running out the door. NRL.com slash Vegas. Vegas, baby. 20,000 rugby league players or rugby league people descending on Vegas. What could possibly go wrong? You got any friends going over, Tomo? No. no. I don't even have any friends at all. I got plenty. Here's McDonald. Ooh, got a little bit awkward there from the resumption. Help! He's able to take it in the end. Hey, should we hold that weight? And let's see whether the Cook Islands can try to keep PNG down this end of the park. They haven't there. even seen this end of the field yet so far. Well, they haven't had much possession, have they? One time they looked a little dangerous. They got penalised for an instruction. Yeah, on the mark, Nelly. On the mark. Hold. Three. Valentine Move Richard, 71% of the ball. And the... Uh, the huge advantage of that breeze aiding Papua New Guinea in the first oh, half. De Bellin. Nothing late. Played to Liam Horn and Lockie Lamb. Nine, give ten, nine. Boots it high in the air. Well taken by Ioka. Oops. Oh, he dropped the ball. Yep. They'd like to start again, the Cook Islands. Nothing. Absolutely nothing has gone their way. Once again, handing easy field position to the PNG Kumul. Great jerseys, the Kumul. It's the national colours of Papua New Guinea. Is it the bird of paradise? Phil Gould is the uh, Papua New Guinea cultural attaché in this commentary combination. He's got nothing. So 15 from the line, the scrum packs here. Papua New Guinea with three tries already. Judah Rimbu feeding the scrum. Lockie Lamb, Alex Johnston catches and passes, and they've won the ball back here, the Cook Islands. Up now. Kale Iro. He's had one NRL game with the Sharks. Son of a great Kevin Iro, the beast. Yeah, well, Kale was, he plays for the New Down Jets, and last year was the Queen, uh, New South Wales Cup Player of the Year. Right. Got a debut with the Sharks. Prolific try scorer. Uh, his father, Kevin Iro, and his uncle was Tony Iro, mm. who played with. Uh, with the Roosters. I coached Tony, played with the Roosters and Manly. One of my favourite players, Tony Iro. Mm. He's the manager. Tony the would yeah, be the, the manager Stand of the team. Up. One of my favourite players. He works uh, works with the Warriors in development pathways across there. He's done some work with the New Zealand Rugby League over the years. Fantastic bloke and, and a wonderful player. Was one of my, really one of my favourite players to coach. Masters. A one handed pass out the back. Stand eight, we're behind the line, all the way. Hold. Go three. And that's uh, Reese Dakin in 15. And they shift to the left. Up now, Dan, behind the line again. Behind and this is as far line, up the field uh, in possession of the football that the Cook Islands has been since the start of the game. He's Eastern Masters, and he might have moved into 5 8. And, and I don't need get a half back, given eight, the injury to Tevin Arona. 
Takarangi. Kicks towards the corner. Well taken at the back. It's Nene McDonald. And good controlled set there by the Cook Islands. Nene McDonald, he played with a number of NRL clubs out here as a younger man. He's been over in England for a couple of seasons. Played second division in English rugby league. And I think he's got a contract with one of the senior clubs this year. Going well from all the thoughts. Here's Johnston. Oh, they love him. They've ignited every time he's touched the ball. Alex Johnston, a South Sydney star. And Lamb from a very long way back. Well, it's so a 20, 20. 40, 20 What about that? That's <laughs> the longest kick I've ever seen. That was a 20-20. It looked like it had a spinnaker attached to it. That's incredible. He's just put it up there on the breeze. A the drinks break here. Brad Takarang wanted him to check it. He didn't know if he was behind the line. 20, 20. He's, inside the 20. <laughs> He's inside the 20, not the 40. <laughs> That's a strong breeze. All right, so they're having a, a drinks break here at the midpoint of the first half. 16-0, Papua New Guinea over the Cook Islands. nil and a look back here at some of the good work by Papua New Guinea. Lucky Lamb's been uh, right in the thick of the action as you'd expect from uh, an NRL quality halfback. Dan Russell, another one of the NRL stars out there. And we might have just seen the longest 40-20 in rugby league history. A 20-20 in fact. Local broadcasters is bringing us up to date with action. It's Jack DeBellon. It's Jack DeBellon and Lucky Liam combined. I'll go to work. Hold! Stand now on the line. Go on. Just play the ball. Don't grab it. Here's DeBellon. And this is Valentine Richard. He's been it. Quite, quite unstoppable the in the first 23 minutes. And De Bellins are playing like an extra half. A bit of Isaiah Yo about his work so far. Johnson back to the middle. There's De Bellin once again. Now Dan Russell, a little juggle, backs into them, gets over the line. But the Cook Islands come in numbers. They wrap up the footy. Don't play it on him, Dan. Don't play it on him. Judah Rimbu waiting at dummy half. A low pass. It was taken well by Horn. And Lamb wants to have a dash himself. Pride, Peterson, the Robati, the chief tackler there. They've only used four plays, though. He's back again, Valentine Richard. They weren't going to deny him. I think we've found a new favourite of yours, Matt. Oh. Valentine Richard. Just wind him up and let him go. Look at the size of the legs on him. That's his second hit up of the, the, the set. And he's just charged. Just wanted it too much. Oh, that is quite the athlete. You get these PNG players and you get them in a in a program or system in the gym and they put on about 10 kilos in about a year and it's all muscle. Have a look at the size of it. He's 26 years of age, he's from Mount Hagen in PNG. Playing with the PNG Hunters, played with the Central Coast uh, Capras up there in North Queensland. It reminds me a lot of the Albert brothers. We had two PNG players come to Panthers uh, a few years ago as part of a development exchange, and the Stanley, uh, Stanley and Wellington, Wellington, Albert, who have both now played for the Cornwalls. 
I remember Wellington Albert, he came down. I said, what position do you play? He said, I play wing and front row. <laughs> <laughs> he played wing like a front row and he played front row like a winger. <laughs> he was a beauty. He's still over there in the UK playing Super League. And he's part of the extended Kumul squad, actually, yeah, for the he, Pacific Championship. He played in the World Cup for them. He's a good player. Good bloke, too. 22 nil. The ICC Cricket World Cup continues from India tomorrow night. Oh, this is big, isn't it? Australia versus Sri Lanka. The Aussies just have to bounce back. One more, one more defeat, and their campaign's just about done. Australia Sri Lanka live from 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Nine's wide world of sports. Gus has watched all the World Cup. Very bleary eyed this afternoon. India flogged Pakistan last night. But the Aussies. We need a win. Oh. Everyone's got to stay up and watch that. We need a win. We need a win. Been very disappointing by Australian standards the first couple of games so far. We've been a terrible. Hmm. Losses to India and South Africa. Well, does India look strong? They crushed Pakistan last evening. Here's McDonald once again. Well, we can't get that Coley out. We haven't been able to do it for years. It doesn't help when you drop him, but he's on zero. Here's Jack DeBellin. Gee, he's been in everything, DeBellin. Well, Jack was one of the first real ball-playing lock forwards, the one that made that position into a ball-playing role. Mm. And it's obviously Jake Trevojevic and Asai Yo and Victor, Victor Radley. And everyone's now wants one. They're all trying to develop lock forwards into being ball players, and it helps the halves enormously. But Jack was one of the initial ones. Do you think he would have le learned off uh, James Graham when James Graham went to the, the Dragons? Well, that's a good point, because James Graham actually did that as a front rower. Yeah. He changed the way front rowers were seen here. Well, this is going to take some catching. Well done. He all cut. In the NRL. James Graham came out to play with uh, Up together, the Bulldogs down, and immediately boy. took on a ball-playing role as a front rower under Des Hasler. In fact, all their forwards did, used to do it. Frank Pritchard. Oh, another area. And Rimbu off the loose ball. He's a goer, this lad. Oh, he's, he's nearly dropped it. He held on to it. Takarangi tried to force it out but couldn't. And a dummy and run by Jacob Arlick now. I'd love a replay of that run from Rimbu. Like he's on the dance floor at Fanny's nightclub. Not sure he's been there. Uh, dummy by DeBellin this time. Tries to suck in some defenders. In Middle of the ground. And the defence coming by Mokaha in 18 for the Cook Islands. Russell. Good run, good 20. defence. Yeah, well, they've, they've had a number. Well, they've had... A stack of tackles on the goal line, and the scoreline could be worse had the Cook Islands not have been as committed as they are. Johnston now tries to hold the defence off. One had to pass, got it away, back to Rimbu. And here's Valentine Richard. Big tackle there. Labert's back, and he got a pass away to Lamb and McDonald with a try. Great combination, Labert and Lamb. That was a beautiful ball. Showcasing all of his skills and PNG really running away with this in the first half. Yeah, the key players standing up. Labert to Lockie Lamb and then the rushing defence, the outside defence, Morgan, coming off his wing to shut it down. And Lockie Lamb sees that props and just throws the ball over the top. Beautiful pass. And then McDonald. He's a player. He burst onto the scene. It looked like he was going to be anything. Absolutely anything. He goes over in the corner. I think he had a serious leg injury there at one stage, didn't he? I remember it yeah, it was up at it was up in Townsville, Townsville. at the old ground. Yeah. It was an awful leg break. Yeah. Now settled down with family in England and more serious about his football. He's done really well across there. He's always had talent. Beautiful work again by Lockie Lamb here. Just the evasion and then just letting the ball go. Reacting straight away to what he feels, not so much what he sees. He could just feel the defence had rushed. Knew where his wingman was and got him the ball.
Zach Labert is going to have to start this a long way left. Let's see where the ball commences. Didn't give it enough room. 26 points to nil. Well, 26 nil. Still 13 minutes to go towards half time. Cook Islands have had very, very little possession. And this strong breeze blowing in their face. They're going to try the short one again, and it's going to get the same result oh, out yeah. on the full. Yeah. yeah, when you get the ball going sideways and you're running into a strong breeze, the breeze takes over. You've got no control over it. You're better off just kicking it straight if you want to kick it high. Kick it straight and let it blow back to you. It's the second time now they've kicked out on the full, and there'll be more possession here for PNG. Labor will ride the breeze here and all the way down to the 20 metre line. That's a great kick. And Cook Island's under pressure again. All the way, 10 metres. The possession count's actually got worse, not better. It's now 77% of the ball to PNG. Up there on the mark, Holt. Here's Nixon. Put with an offload to Rimbu. He's all effort, isn't he? Judah Rimbu. Nine metres out. Labert to Bellin. Lockie Lamb. Short pass here, and it was forward. Kyle to Zach. Execution not quite right. I've got to say, the Cook Islands have defended grimly, but they really haven't shirked their task. There's been some classy play from. PNG that's created the points, but they're not running through them. The Bonds are, are standing up and making their tackles where they can. They just need some possession. What they need is the half-time break so they can turn around with that gale force breeze at their back. Hold on to the first and foremost. Well, that's, oh, there is. that's scoreboard press. They've got to forget about the scoreboard and what the score is. It's a tenacious run. Down there, back to me behind the line. Stephen Masters played six games for South Sydney. He's playing down at the, the Wool Butchers in the south coast of New South Wales. Yeah, he's at Thoreau. He actually trained last off-season. He got a trial, training trial type opportunity with the Bulldogs. Ended up playing with Thrill. Had some talent. He's Iro. He's a good player, young Iro. Yeah. Got great outside backs at the Cronulla Sharks, so it's hard for him to get a start there. And even if he does, to get any sort of regular exposure to the NRL. But I think if he did get a, a shot yeah. with a club to play regular NRL, he's quite up to the mark. Takarangi to finish off the set with a high kick and Johnston underneath it. And he's opposing number one there with a good shot. Iorca jams the South Sydney veteran to the ground. Robert Darby. And now Zach Labert. Three tackles used just outside the 10 metre line here. Papua New Guinea. Oh, there's a great tackle. Well, that's something to get them going. That was Justin Macareri in 16, who's come from the bench with a great front on tackle. And a kick from very deep in their own half. And you can see the wind is going to go dead. Wow. Cook Island's in no hurry to come back and get their 20 metre tap. And we've got into a jog now. So the pictures you're seeing, as uh, Gus has pointed out a couple of times, coming to us from the, from the uh, PNG local host broadcaster. Up now, Jack. Get square, hold. Oh, he dropped that. The referee didn't pick it up. Peter Goff. 
the man in control this afternoon. Here's Tedavano. It's been very busy, Tedavano. Now Ruben Porter plays his football for North Sydney. There's a North Sydney bear out there for the Cook Islands. I can hear James Bracey cheering in the background. Captain of the Ruben Porter fan club this afternoon. Here's his man again. Well, they've got through a couple of sets in succession here, the Cook Islands. Now Masters. Oh, it's the last. Get a ball away. And trying to find someone with a bit of a kicking game. Here's a Pride Peterson Rabadi. Goes out, goes out to well, Malachi Morgan, and that wasn't part of the uh, the game. Plan. Plenty of style. <laughs> Plenty of style. <laughs> he just kicked it. He just kicked it. He feathered it to the opposition centre. He's dreamt of that moment. <laughs> it was tricky too. It was like a no-look chip kick for no result. Maybe not the technique he uses as a winger when it's blowing 60 k's an hour. No, look. Chip kicks. Oh, good shot. 16 again. It's a Makareri, yeah. And Nixon Port has made a mistake on the back of that. That's a good result. Hard to see Kale Iro with some early ball on that left side. He's a prolific try scorer in the New South Wales Cup. Plays with the great New Down Jets. How, how tall is he? He doesn't look as tall as his dad. Maybe six foot two. So oh, really? Yeah. You can certainly find the try line. Here he is now. Depth, as Gus has pointed out there in the backs at, at Cronulla. The other one who wasn't uh, wasn't available throughout the whole season, all a mistake and a turnover, uh, was uh, was Kate Dykes, of course, who yeah. suffered a bad knee injury right at the start of the year. So when you think it took Connor Tracy a long time to break into that team, and that was really only after Will Kennedy got injured. They've got Dykes, they've got Iro, a number of uh, ready-made NRL players there in the back line for Cronulla. The form guide says he's 187 centimetres. How much is that in feet and inches? About 6'1", nearly. Lockie Lamb. Away to Alec. Just steady the ship a little here, the Cook Islands. They were beating the clock at one stage, PNG, so it's been, uh, it's been a good tenacity from the visiting nation. McDonald, nice kick to the end goal. It's going to roll a fraction too long. Maybe not with that breeze behind you. And really well, the Cook Islands, defensive-wise. Could be 50 with how much ball. 75% possession to the Kummels. Well, I wonder what the breeze is worth in return now. Well, whether they'll have the energy to use it. Mm. That's the other thing. Did well there, Kyle Lyra in defence. Kale. Let's see where this kick for touch goes. Looks fit, he's saying Masters. He was another one that stormed onto the scene, wasn't he? There was a couple of games there where he was untouchable. Yeah. Footwork. He's early, early Great games with the West Tigers. He looked like a superstar of the future. Now, get yeah, well, that's the battle. It's the NRL's not easy. It's hard to get there, but then it's even harder to stay there. Yeah. Justin Macareri has been very strong in defence since coming from the bench. There he is with the touch of the footy. This is like Pridus and Rabati. Takarangi. Masters joining in. Couldn't link up with the man on the outside. And uh, gives the pass to Porter. And they're up to the 10th. A try before half time would be 
Very welcome news for the Cook Islands. Well, that's the first play of the ball inside the Kummels 20. Reese Dakin. Three metres out. Right underneath the posts here. Ball sent to Takarangi. Rolls it through. There's a mistake at the back there by Robert Darby. And so a goal line dropout coming here. Big Brad Takarangi playing at 5'8 here for the Cook Islands. He's got beautiful skill and footwork for a big man. You can see their kicking game. Been played mainly as a forward or a, a centre in the NRL during his career. They'll need to get deep here because if he gets onto this dropout, it could go anywhere. He might kick it dead at the other end. And we didn't get hold of no, it. No, no. He tried, but you know what? That's like a golfer. He caught He's it in his knees. It it's like a golfer when you get up on the tee box and you've got the big breeze behind you and you try and hit the cover off it. Well, that was your first mistake, Matthew. Just talking more generally, actually. But no, you're right. So, uh, Malachi Morgan playing at 11 metres out. Takarangi, another classy pass. Masters to Stephen Masters. Can't quite get there. Couple of minutes until half time. Oh, he's oh. lost the ball, Dakin. And uh, PNG trying to mount a counter attack now. Roderick Ty dropped down in the tackle. That was unfortunate. It's been a long first half. We were littered with stoppages for injuries in the first 15 minutes. Time on. Go away. Here's Robert Darby. Stand now behind Robert the booth for North guys. Queensland against Parramatta oh. at uh, Combank Stand Stadium on. in the earlier part of the season. And Nixon put. It's been a mainstay of the PNG Hunters in the Queensland Cup. Here's a chance. Johnston. Alex Johnston in the clear. He's got a couple in front of him. If he goes for the corner, he'll just about score. He gets a pass away. Great work. Johnston laid it in right on half time. Yeah, you're cheering him home, man. Alex Johnston. Great support play through the middle horn. Great footwork. He exploded through the middle of the ruck. And then he found the lightning, Alex Johnson. And then Zach Labert finishes off. He's having a game and a half on that left side. Zach Labert. You thought he was home, Alex Johnson. He's had the wind at his back and everything, Andrew. You thought he was home. Yeah, well, the, the fans have given him such a reception whenever he's touched the ball. I wanted to hear them go off when he's, he scored. He's one of your favourites. You're on your feet screaming. Here he is. Goes through the middle. Horn. And then he finds Alex Johnson. He was home here. Home. And then you put the mock on him, Matt. <laughs> Slowed him up. And then laid it over in the corner. Yeah, nice try. Through the middle of the field. Playmakers working together. Alex Johnson, at fullback. As I said earlier, he's, he was a tremendous young fullback as a teenager. Schoolboy champion, junior rep player. It was always thought that he'd be an NRL fullback. But he's made such a fine fist of playing on the wing. And then a fellow by the name of Greg Inglis came along playing fullback for South. And, and a bloke called Led Latrell Mitchell, so his yeah. opportunities at the back have been limited to the point now where he's scored 187 tries from 214 NRL games. Did well there, Labor, to back up. The breeze has been very testing for his goal kicking, and this won't be any easier from way out on the left hand touchline. But it's a pretty productive first half of football from the PNG side, entertaining the home crowd. You'll have to aim this nearly along the 20 metre line to get it the swing back. There it goes. Oh. So it's 30 nil at half time. PNG leading the Cook Islands in Port Moresby. Welcome back to tonight's coverage of the Pacific Championship. Footy live from Port Moresby. The Cook Islands with some work to do in the second half against PNG. The Kummels leading 30 points to nil as we head back to Joey, Gus and Matthew. Thanks, James. Bit of work to do for the Cook Islands. PNG 
dominating the first half. In fairness, the Cook Islands couldn't have had much else go against them. And PNG with... Uh, oh, look at that. Well, with the benefit <laughs> of that breeze, they've, they've used it to advantage with a short kickoff and got the ball straight back. Well, Cook Highlands had six kickoffs and couldn't get one right. I well, kicked three out in the full. Let's see whether there's a, a little change in fortune for the visiting team here. Well, at least it shows the breeze is still there. Mm. I haven't seen a longer 40 20, I don't think. A 20 20. Amazing kick from uh, Lockie Lamb. Here's Nixon Port. There's Lamb. And Jacob Arlick. Big, strong, strapping back rower. Oh, there's a run. Junior Rock, who's on the ground. Rock All the locals Rock. love that. Labert and Lamb, a little grubber towards the end goal, and uh, the ball spews out the back, and this might be another try straight after the break for PNG. Did the Cook Islands force it there in the contest? Well, the referee likes it. It's the perfect start to the second half for the, for the locals. Nice little kick here from Lachlan Lamb into the end goal. And then we'll just have to see who bobbles it and whether or not the ball was forced before Nene McDonald gets his hands on it. They're checking whether he catches the ball. Not sure Morgan's forced that there. It's well, probably play on to that point. But that, it's been grounded fairly. It should be a try. Yep. Morgan gets in underneath. Gets his hands to the ball first, but I don't think he forces it. And then McDonald is able to get around the back there and force the ball. So it's the perfect start for the PNG side. I've got to say, they've been most professional PNG, haven't they? And, and they're coached for the first time today by Justin Holbrook. He brings that, that NRL polish to this lineup that boasts a number of NRL stars. They've got nine players out there who've played in the NRL. And the cheer tells the story. Well, the Cook Islands were hoping that breeze might trigger some sort of a, a comeback after half time. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's continued on. 34 nothing. <laughs> Zach Labor. Difficult assignment for goal kickers given the windy conditions. He's kicked three from six. Well, it'll help. He's a left footer. Look at this really low. Oh, he's judged it beautifully. 36 nothing. Try to Nene McDonald in his 15th test for Papua New Guinea. Whoa! Ferocious run and great tackle. Good front on shot by Reese Dakin. Roderick Ty. I'm playing at uh, right centre for PNG. Russell's been very strong. He's another one of these players that had to wait a long time for an NRL opportunity. Spent many years toiling away at Queensland Cup level in particular, and 
It's a, in his late 20s, he's got a chance in the NRL. And here's Rimbu bursting through the middle. McDonald on the back up, and it's another one. That's his third. Late, the late offload. It's a killer. And then it goes out the back, and Rimbu, he puts the afterburners on, and he is off. Where did McDonald come from? Is he? Is he playing fullback here? Because he's pushed through the middle there. You know, he and uh, Alex listen. Johnson have swapped over a few times yeah, during the swapped. game. Just giving everyone a go to run the ball and get involved in the action. And you think if Alex if Alex Johnson was full back then, he would have scored for sure. And then Amy Donald, he gets three. But the dummy half, Rimbu. He's good. He put the afterburners on. Replay, please. He's very quick. Yeah. It, the the local the broadcasters are just rewinding the tape. Here, here we go. <laughs> he charges, gets three and four in the tackle, and then gets it out the back. And Rimbu, he's off. Alex Johnson's on the other side, but he goes oh. to the right. Uh, yes. And Nene gets three. Three tries for Nene McDonald. And another kick for Labert. Pull hamstring with all their shots at goal. Well, they're running into the breeze and Cook Islands haven't touched the ball yet. meeting of these two nations at international level in all three games so far have gone the way of PNG but this is heading towards a record result this one oh gee they're just playing fun for you now Johnston joining in a couple of times on that play ball goes out to Darby Darby through Darby trying to turn them inside out oh he lost the ball well, there's some beautiful football in that passage a couple of nice offloads around the corner pass and shifted the ball quickly to the edges. Derby, I think, is a prolific try scorer in the Queensland Cup, Matthew, isn't he? Are you going to challenge this one? I've got no doubt he bobbles it. I think they're more going to look for a, a high shot. Right. Yes, well, Takarangi was the man who got over there to stop, he does, stop that attacking passage. He does fumble the ball. Yes, he's an athletic move for Robert Darby. Or oh, might have been that one. That was a lazy one. The challenge will be successful. They still haven't touched the ball after half time. No, the next time they touch it, might be kicking off again. Junior Rop. He's got a reputation as an enforcer. The fans. Fans embracing his efforts so far. Liam Horn plays for Castleford in the UK. Three metres from the Cook Islands line. Can I get a ninth try? Nope. There's an error. Yeah, good defence. Stood his ground there against a rampaging forward. Was that Junior up again? Yep. Just charging at the line. Fancied his chances of muscling his way into the in goal. And Cook Islands just stood their ground. 
a real hurry to get this scrum packed. Gus, a lot of people watching this, they would be seeing the athleticism, the power of these, these PNG uh, athletes. A, a few have been able to make that successful transition from largely cup level football to, to NRL. Are you, uh, are you confident there's going to be more of that as far as a development pathway goes? Because the, given the amount of people and the popularity of the sport in PNG, it's an obvious breeding ground for talent. Oh, absolutely. Um, as I said, like a PNG at the moment, I think it's around about 10 million people in that country. There's only about 400,000 live in the major city, Port Moresby. They're all in villages scattered right throughout the island and particularly up in the highlands and different areas around the, uh, the PNG island. And th there just isn't the opportunity. There are, there are some areas up there where they can only play football when the tide goes out because they play on the beach. Incredible. So there's only a few hours a day where they can go out and throw a ball around if they've got a ball in the village. So it's, it's all about opportunity mm. and, and getting them the chance to come along and train. And, um, they're strong people. The work that they do up there is really hard. Uh, just for survival, so um, they've got great, great survival and great toughness instincts. But it's just, and, and they come in all shapes and sizes. There are some big, big PNG people up there, particularly up in the highlands. Takarangi, nice pass, floating a lovely ball out there to Kailairo. Back to East Sand Masters. And Takai Mokaha. Wearing 18. Seven from PNG line. Can they jag a try here? Takarangi with a precision kick. What a catch. What a put down. Malachi Morgan has probably got a try here. Brad Takarangi again. I've said it a couple of times. Wonderful, silky skills for a big man. And Brad's well into his 30s now. They're playing 5-8 here today. He's had some nice touches when they've had the ball. Look at this. It's a beautifully placed kick. Just gets it over the top of the opposition winger. And right into a hand of his own winger. Pinpoint accurate. That's brilliant. It's actually Ioka who's moved out to that right wing, who's the man that caught the ball and maybe got it down all in one motion. What a catch, what a try. Some way to get them on the board. Great athleticism for Isom Ioka from the Western Clydesdales. Let's have a Toowoomba. He was born in Auckland, New Zealand. Clydesdales are back in the, uh, the Queensland Cup now for the first time for a number of years. Used to be associated with the Broncos many, many years ago. Now have an association with the Bulldogs here in Sydney. In their first year back in the competition, were quite competitive. Can only get better in time. More importantly, they're building junior pathways there for some younger fellas to get the opportunity to train and live out their dream of hopefully getting through to the higher level. But this is great work here by Takarani. Beautifully placed kick. Great catching. Put down too. He's 34. Brad Takarangi, who's also doing the goal kicking, the oldest of the Cook Islands representatives today. Well, they'll have to clean up the dressing rooms. He's doing everything else. <laughs> it kicks off target, 42-4. Australia v New Zealand coming up Saturday, October 28. It's a double head of this one. Jillaroo's Kiwi Ferns played a cracking game to start the Pacific Championships yesterday and the Kangaroos and the Kiwis live from Amy Park in Melbourne. Saturday, October 28, 7.30pm. 
That'd be a cracking game. Oh, yeah. He named a strong squad, the Kiwis, as they always do. It's quite a forward pack. See? PNG straight down the middle of the ground into the breeze. That's the easiest way to be. It's PNG knock on, however. Things are very stop start at the moment. They have been pretty much right the way through this game. Just the New Zealand forward pack Fisher Harris, Nelson Asa for Solomona, Moses Leota, Did Leo Thompson, Leo Thompson selected from, from the Knights. Joseph Tapane, it's, it's an unbelievable forward pack. Yeah, the Australians are no slouches. This is pretty good too. Did Kieran Foran get selected in the squad also? I think yes. Kieran Foran's in there too. Yeah. So Dylan Brown will will, Dylan? will be in the halves. And Jerome Hughes is there. Now I don't think Sean Johnson made it because of that, that injury towards the back part of the year, but they are a, a most formidable lineup. And in terms of the women's game, there's very little between the Jillaroos and the Kiwi Ferns at the moment. Only a six-point game, that one yesterday. Well, you take Tamika up and out of the, the game, mm. they win the Kiwi Ferns. Once again, it's only a first test, Tamika Upton. Really? Killed it. Oh, it's gone backwards. And Johnson there to clean up. She was phenomenal in the women's grand final, wasn't she? Oh, what a player. Well, she yeah. scored two tries yesterday. Pretty much all on her own. What a play. A few good fullbacks emerging behind her as well. Tegan Berry from the Dragons had a wonderful campaign in the NRLW. She's a player. She's very quick. Mm. Who would be your favourite Papua New Guinea player of all time? Be hard to go past Marcus Boy. Here's uh, his masters. What about Justin Olam? So Cook Islands with the benefit of some points on the board. Let's see if they can uh, can provide some positive output here in the second half of the game. This is Malachi Morgan up over the halfway and. Away to Dakin. Oh, strong tackle. Nixon put. Got hit very hard. These crusher tackles, all that weight on the back of the player's neck. It must give him a terrible fright. It must get that nerve pain. I think it was the, grip. The, the initial contact. It was more a knock than a crusher type motion. We're off to the uh, HIA. And Jack DeBellin back into the game. As is Davy Moale, the young firebrand from South Sydney. What a future he has. Yeah, he's come on. He came on this year at a big off season. And he's seen Sam Burgess took him under his wing. Here's Iro. And Aressa with Nixon put and Jack Capella. Gee, strong. Oh, the, the hell call came there, I think. Oh, no, the referee still uh, allows play to continue. Isan Masters confronted by Nixon Put. They scored the last try. See if they can get one here. Oh, it's the last tackle. Oh. I don't think Davy Moali, well, he either ignored the call or didn't care for it. Probably fancied his chances. There's plenty of him, isn't there? It's, uh, 
20 years of age, Davy Miley, if that. He debuted at 18 in the NRL, yeah. which is not easy as a front rower. He was a school board prodigy. Mm. Went to Waverley College. He played that first 15 for three years, maybe four years from year nine. He came through Ronald Volk. Volk. further to, to that discussion we were just having regarding the strength of the New Zealand squad. Vitamu Greg. Big Nelson there. Griffin Neem, yeah, we mentioned Nelson after Sol Solomon. Isaiah Papali'i, Britton Nikora. Nafahu White gets an opportunity from the Roosters. They, they, have a, they are just blessed with incredible forward stocks. Griffin Neem. Yeah. That's just the idea. Who's that? Is that? Try scoring a grand final, Moses Leota. Joey Manu, Jermaine Asako, Keanu Kinney, mm. a young superstar from the Gold Coast Titans. Haven't seen a lot of him in the top grade yet, but what he has done has excited everyone. Not unlike Sua Falongo last evening, similar type of player. He was brilliant. There's a bit more of uh, Sua. Than there is this Keanu, than there is of Keanu. Keanu's very slight. Very small. Small kid. Sewer is brilliant. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> Labor. They cheer the collisions. Yeah. They like the collisions. <laughs> That's right. The bigger they hit, the bigger the cheer. Tedavano. Dragged to ground by Nene McDonald. Look. It's a bit of a mess. And uh, G'day, Ioka with the kick. It's been knocked on. He's offside. Great chase there. Forced the error. He scored the only try in the corner. Off the Brad Takarangi kick. This time, have a look at the top of the screen. He gets down there and then puts the pressure on. And the winger, Darby, he has a look. That's just enthusiasm. Enthusiasm makes up for a lot. Mm. Something always happens when you're enthusiastic, when you just chase. Over get, the line, get over and oh, oh, he dropped the ball. Driving effort there by Makareri, who uh, has been a defensive enforcer and nearly got his name on the score sheet there if he had them cop the ball up. National Rugby League Stadium in Port Moresby. I've, I've seen, as many people would have, a lot of archive vision from a decade or so ago, and it's pretty, it's pretty rugged going and playing footy at Port Moresby. This is this is luxurious compared to what they've had to contend with. Yeah, they've got some nice stadia up there now, um, brought on by you know, funding from Pacific Games and also from the resources, um, the overseas people that are investing in resources up there gas and oil and gold and different things and you know, I think Oil Search built them a nice stadium there in the middle of Port Moresby and upgraded a lot of facilities. Good pass. Roderick Ty down the wing. Excellent chase and good tackle by Iro, but there's a penalty here for a player taken out in back play. Well, if the referee just doesn't let this flow and stop penalising everything, we might be here till midnight. Very stop start at the moment. So we thank the uh, the local happy to get in broadcaster for uh, providing the pictures for us this afternoon. Forty-two four, nice offload. 
And uh, Alec galloping up towards the 20. Rimbu, one of the star performers for PNG today. It looks a likely character. Lachlan Lamb brings Johnston back in the middle. Oh, there's obstruction there. That's a bit of a lack of time playing together, perhaps. So, Masters, let's see how far this kick travels with the breeze assisting. Well, it's, still, it's still pretty obvious. Stephen Masters. With the tap restart and Reuben Porter. Nice offload. And here's Peterson now. Robati, a couple of metres out from the halfway. Developing with that trademark cutting tackle style. And uh, Alec there to help. Here's Mawale. It's a bell and chases from Marker. And at 17 for PNG, Benji Cott on the ground. Nice backhanded pass. Masters, Stephen Masters with a kick through. It's been regathered. It's another try. Masters uh, with a lovely kick, and he got the rebound and scored the try. I thought he was going to kick it out of the stadium. Beautiful play. And a lovely flick pass on the edge, on the edge of the ruck there. He kicked that ball. Did said it looked like it was going to go out of the stadium. He's picked up by an injury with it, by the look of it. He's struggling to get moving there. But must have taken a ricochet here because he did give it a good belt. Lovely play there. Had his wingman open. Oh, the there you go. It's a, foul, it's a falcon. He's got a ricochet off the, the head. Yeah, Johnston. Straight up Johnston. Knocking. Try assist, Alex Johnson. Flick pass. Uh, cousin to cousin. So they've scored the last two tries at Cook Islands. He's done some really clever things, Tackle Rangi. Oh, he's straightened the ball there, straightened the play. And uh, East Sand Masters featuring prominently there. Uh, a Masters combination. Try number two. Well, there's Car the, there's there's the Carmichael. Coach. Well, he's the coach, Carmichael Hunt, who, who actually in his first year as a head coach of South Logan in the Queensland Cup was named Coach of the Year. Lovely strike. Straight between the sticks. 42 points to 10 after the 49th summer of tennis is here. It all starts on December 29 with the hottest ticket of the summer, the Australian Open coming to you live from January 14, right here on Nine's Wide World of Sports. So much wonderful sporting action coming away on Nine's Wide World of Sports over the summer months. Has an Australian ever won the Australian Open? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The last one was Mark Edmondson in the men's. And the last one was Ash Barty in the women's. Okay. Pat Rafter never? No, he didn't win the Australian Open. Philip Pusis never? Won, won, uh, Pat Rafter won a couple of US Opens. And he won Wimbledon, didn't he, Pat Rafter? Lake Hewitt won Wimbledon. Pat Rafter lost the final of Wimbledon to Goran Ivanisevic. And uh, I think I'm right in saying Pat Rafter and Mark Philippus has played in a US Open final. Did they? Yeah. It's always the way. You, you want a Grand Slam champion and two of them make the final. I suppose you're guaranteed to win one way or the other. Anything else, Eddie Maguire? Rod Laver won three Australian Opens a long, long time ago. Rod Laver won. Margaret Court, did she? Margaret Court, she won a yeah. couple? Yeah. Won the Grand Slam, did he, Rod Laver? Yep. Always wonderful to see Rod Laver in the flesh during the summer tennis months. Revered by Roger Federer. The great Rod Laver. Really? Oh. 
He won the three Australian Opens in 1960, 62 and 69. He won two French Opens in 62 and 69. Won four Wimbledons, 61, 62, 68 and 69. And two US Open titles in 62 and 69. Wow, what a player. I can't believe you remembered all that. Showing some ticker the Cook Island. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh here's the kick ahead. Labert's after it. Labert's chasing. He'll put another boot on it. And uh, they get back there. Iro scampered to the, the loose ball and dived upon it. Of course, uh, on the Australian Open, Nick Kyrgios is a finalist at the Australian Open. Who's that? Nick Kyrgios played in the final. Of the Australian Open? Yeah, two years ago. Wow. Pat Cash made the Australian Open final twice in 87, 88. He won Wimbledon in 87, didn't he? He lost to Stephen Edberg and Matt Villander. Stefan? St St Stefan Edberg? Stefan Edberg. Stephen's his brother. Yeah. Stefan. Oh, this is a this is messy footy now, isn't it? It's <laughs> well, we're talking about tennis. <laughs> it's a chip and chat. He's Alex Bianca, Johnson. He's Johnston. Picks it up on the bump. Oh, don't get in the way, Jack. He stood there like a pot plant. Didn't move. Here's Robert Darby. Oh. Pedersen Rabati, 42 tackles. Well, they've had, they've only had 36% of the ball, so a few of them are really clocking up uh, significant numbers in the tackle count stakes. Ball sent right here, Labert. Lockie Lamb straightens, tie, good tackle. Well, Pedersen Rabati, he was with the Warriors when I was doing a little bit of consultancy work with him a couple of years ago. Okay. And he was seen as a player of great potential. I really liked him. I think he's playing in the Queensland Cup at the moment. I think he might have been around the Brisbane system too. Yeah, it's quite a talent. The Bellin. Oh, tackle rang, he's got him. Good tackle. Here's the last. Over the top to Rimbu, now Labert. McDonald's got three. Oh, that wasn't a kick they were looking for, and Ira gets back to field it. And Scurry's back. This is a quick restart, look out. Oh, well tackled, well tackled Labert. He's been sensational, Ira. He's a good kid. Like I said, if they didn't have so many class players there at the Sharks, I'm sure he plays NRL with most, or at least with some other sides. And if he got some time in the top grade, he'll only get better. Masters pops an offload. Peterson Robati. Gets to a stage where you're just not going to get any better playing reserve grade football. It's still a great standard of footy, but you're not going to get any better if you play it for too long. You've got to graduate up into the NRL and play against the best around. That's where you learn your football, playing with and against the best. You can coach them all you like. They learn most of it while they're out there in the middle playing with good players against good players. Tedovano loses his footing. Masters and away to Takai Mokaha. He said Masters. He's been uh, pretty creative, and there's a trap and strap, and a PNG dive on the ball and get it back. Yeah, that was tough footy. That's 50 50 balls on the ground. Oh, no. oh. oh. Roderick Ty. Here's Benji Cott. Taken by Takarangi. He has had a he's had a real go, Brad Takarangi, hasn't he? I know they're on the end of a, a thumping scoreline, but with and without the ball, he's, he's they've been a standout for them. Now Lamb, little dink over the top. McDonald's trailing through, gives the pass away. Lamb's got it back. Lucky Lamb races away and scores. Did I hear a, a whistle? Oh, he did. Side. 
Coach Nenai. So next weekend, Pacific Championship action, Saturday, 1.30 p.m., Kiwi Ferns versus Tonga. There'll be plenty of, plenty of impact in the collision in that one. And then we see New Zealand for the first time against the Samoans. That's from Eden Park, Auckland as well. Wonderful venue, Eden Park. And as we've outlined, a very uh, imposing squad name for uh, the New Zealand team to contest this Pacific Championships and Andrew you, you think Samoa on the back of that run last night will be will be much better next week that they've, they've had to reshape their team with Dejan Arce and Stephen Crichton playing in the halves no no Jerome Luai obviously a very cruel blow for them but There's they would have ball. they would have grabbed they would have uh, taken a lot of benefit from that hit out against the Aussies if they got the start right last night would have been a whole lot closer Oh, really impressive, Samoa. Hung in there. Missing key players. How many players they have on debut? Well, there was nine changes from the World Cup side yeah. from last year. I think there were 13 changes and nine debut players. Mm. But uh, yeah, they were impressive. Rimbu. Tabella now and Lamb. Good read, Stephen Masters shoots in from the wing and wraps the number seven up. Johnson, the first receiver. Oh, was he tripped over? Yes, he was. He was saying high tackle. Oh. <laughs> it was one of the other triple or high tackle. Penalty. Here come PNG again. Looks like the breeze has settled a little bit. Here's Valentine Richard. And his mates, Epe Carpinias. They started up front and uh, they, they punched holes in the Cook Islands early on. Rimbu through the hands now and uh, Roderick Ty. He's run out of room here. They're going to put him over the sideline. Yeah, good defence. Is the rain? Has it hit? It's not the rain. Well, they're predicting some showers. Oldie Mark with an assisted drag. You have to play over the touchline. ICC Cricket World Cup, we mentioned this in the first half. This is crucial. Australia with two very bad losses to start their World Cup campaign. They take on Sri Lanka in a must-win game tomorrow night. And you'll see it from 7 o'clock on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Can Pat Cummins and the boys turn it around? It's been a very flat start to the campaign. I'm well not giving, off the pace. I'm not giving up. No, no. I'm not giving up. Have we got any spinners over there? Because you need spinners in India, don't you? Our Who's well, our spinners? Adam Zampa and Glenn Maxwell. Uh, doing most of the spin bowling work. But actually, 1999, the World Cup, Australia had a terrible start and had to win, I reckon it was seven games straight, and they went through and, and won the World Cup in England. So they're, <laughs> they're not quite at that stage yet, but they're, if, they, if they'll lose this one, they, they, they couldn't lose another game if they're, if they're hopeful of going through and winning it. 99. Warney would have taken... Well, he was absolutely brilliant. Was he our only spinner at that time? Well, that was in England, that one. Yeah, that, that, was the, that was the famous one, Andrew, where Herschel Gibbs dropped the World Cup. Uh, Rimbu <laughs> scooting away. Go, 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 it. They're go, all out of gas go. here. The hook is going to run away and score under the post. <laughs> he got to the bunker. Why has he gone to the bunker? The game's gone an hour overtime and we've gone to the bunker again. Where's Pete? Pete Oak. He's a big fan. Why are we going in the bunker? He drops the ball. 
Well, it's off the PNG player, so they're, they're wondering whether there's well, a double knock he's, on. He's only making a tackle. He's not playing at the ball. The ball fell into him. Don't disallow it. Uh, as soon as you said that, it was never going to be a try. Anyway, Sri Lanka will be hard to beat. So we need to be good. A lot of spinners in the Sri Lankan side. How, how, one of my favourite spinners, Greg Matthews. How did he used to go in India? I ran into him the other day, Mark. Well, Andrew, it's funny you ask that, because Greg Matthews bowled, bowled the last over in the tied test in 1986. Really? I played junior rep cricket with Greg Matthews. He's a character, isn't he? Yeah. He was, he was younger than us. He got he, last game of the season, he came up to play in the under-16s. I think he was only 13. I batted with him. I think we put on 100, he scored 93. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I soon worked out I wasn't going to be a test cricketer. In, uh, in that test, Andrew, in, in 1986 in uh, India, it was... They reckon it was low 40s in terms of 40 degrees Celsius, and Greg Matthews played the entire test with a vest on. What is his vest? Is that the one where Dee Jones was? It was, uh, was it the match? It was the it was series. It, he was... it may well have been the same game, yes. In the last wicket, it was LBW, and the umpire went up faster than the fielders. Something going on there? Well, I don't know, but it, it's very funny. Very funny vision. So uh, eight minutes to go. The ball goes to Labert and out to Carpinias. Big fan of the Commons, Greg Matthews. He loves it. The Bellan. Jack. He's over. Well, we have to have a look at this one. Oh, no try. Gus, what do you think? Oh, oh, now it's a try. I had to get down. Surely it scratched the grass. That's a try. I think the ball gets down before they get a hand under it. That's, that's down. And then it comes up. They got lights at this ground. That's a try. Give Jack a try. Come on. Let's have a kick at goal. Oh, I don't think it's a try. You can tell by the you can't hear the the uh, we can't hear the bunker very well, but you can judge it very nicely. Uh, you can judge it very well there by the crowd's reaction. So, 42-10 it remains. Jack DeBellin didn't lose control of the ball, so they get one more tackle here on the last. And it goes out to Lamb, who tries to thread the needle. He's got the ball back. Has he got another set of six? He has. Of course, we'll be off to nine news straight after this test match. Jack DeBellin powering his way towards the post. It'll take a big effort for the Cook Islands to turn the hosts away here. Here's Carpinias. Big, burly front rower. Can't muscle his way there. They've knocked them back for three plays. Ball goes to Russell now. Change of direction. Rimba, Carpinias again, ball at the back. And PNG have got it and they have one more shot on this set. Johnston, not a great pass. And scooped up here by Ioka. And the Cook Islands uh, out past their own 20. Stephen Masters. He's actually given his NRL debut by Wayne Bennett when he was coaching South Sydney, Stephen Masters. And really? I, and he 
He was he was pretty impressive in a handful of games with South Sydney. Well, he's been their best today, I wrote. They've been courageous. I'd love to score again. Flick out the back. It uh, goes to Tedovano, and then uh, on the bump, Porter gives a pass back to Stephen Masters. Tedovano again, out past the 30-metre the, uh, the line of Papua New Guinea and wrapped up in the tackle of Valentine Richard. Here's Takarangi. Takes them on himself. Wants to get up and play it quickly here. They'd love a try to finish with. Give them something to work with heading forward in the tournament. Uh, chip across the ground, and uh, it's a contest for the ball. Might have come off a Cook Island player there. No. Yes. We're going to a 20-meter restart, so the Cook Islands uh, took it dead. Well, they're entitled to challenge. Referee saying that the ball came off uh, the Cook Island player's back. So look, here he jumps for the ball. Local broadcaster just rewinding here. There it is. Comes off his back. Unsuccessful. You see some droplets of rain on the camera there. Predicted there'd be a few showers, which would be a welcome release for them. Very humid when they started this game. 28, 30 degrees, but very, very humid. Nino McDonald, a hat trick. And this is 15th appearance for PNG today. He's got the ball tied up in the grasp of Takarangi. They're still running hard, aren't they? They only know one way, this uh, Kummels team. Benji Cott playing it. Lamb, Johnson, oh, intercept opportunity. Ioka nearly snuffed that one out, but the ball's bounced over the sideline. Yeah, some of the wingers are really smart. You know, they can feel when a quick hands play is on, and they know that the man in front of them is, is trying desperately to get his hands as, on and off the ball as quickly as possible, so he's not thinking about dummy. When they can actually see in their body language and read their minds that they're, they're about to try and flick that on, it's a real good opportunity sometimes to pick them off for, a, for an intercept. He very nearly got it there. So the new is coming up at the completion of this game, which is a uh, little more than five minutes away now. DeBello. Nice hands again. They work to the left hand side and caught holding defenders off. Again, he's been everywhere for the Cook Islands today. Liam Horn. Yeah. Johnston. Oh, Johnston. I think it was play on, and they 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 belted him there in the tackle, and now there's a penalty. Well, Johnston was tangled up there with the player on the ground, and the. the the player was entitled to make the tackle I, I there. I have no idea what this penalty's for. If he doesn't hit him high, he's fair game. Well, I, I think Alex Johnson was playing for a penalty that someone was interfering in to play the ball. So he was trying to milk a penalty. And Cook Island said, we're not having any of that. So he's still got his leg there. He said, I'll just lay here and get a penalty. So Bang. Was the, the penalty for the player in the, in the ruck? Well, I'd say that's right because there's nothing wrong with the tackle. Anyway, chance for PNG to score again. He hasn't stopped this fella. Been the best player on the field by miles. Valentine Richard. He's Lamb. McDonald for four. Try. Yeah, classy stuff. Lachlan Lamb again with another try assist. And then Ian McDonald with another classy finish. 
A test record for PNG. Four tries in a game for Nene McDonald. He's a classy player. But once again, it was it was the pass from Lachlan Lamb. Just gets him on the outside. Perfect timing. He gets the ball out in front. The ball beat the player. Crowd. Good play here. Selective pass. McDonald had a bit to do, but was able to brush aside his opposite number and just get his way into the, the end goal. Bit of experience there. Land. Good vision. Nice pass. Number of try assists this afternoon. And I'll say it again. He's given an opportunity in the NRL, a regular opportunity to play in the top grade. I'm sure he can mature into a, a longer term NRL player. Probably more a 5'8 than a halfback. He likes to run the ball a bit more. Good pedigree, that's for sure. So laboured from wide, wide out. His tenth shot at goal for the afternoon. Nine tries. Great effort. For PNG at home in front of a boisterous home crowd. The kick out to the right, 46 10. So, next week, just a reminder too, we'll have Kiwi Ferns v Tonga and then in the men's New Zealand versus Samoa from Eden Park, Auckland. This will be a wonderful atmosphere. The Pacific Championships action here on uh, Nines Wide World of Sports. 90 seconds remaining. Big win for the Cobbles. Tackled by Reuben Porter. And here's Cott. Now there was two in the tackle and the steal was instigated. So penalty to PNG and an opportunity for maybe one last try. Ah, quick tap. Liam Horn takes off. Down on the halfway line. He's worked hard. He hasn't gone up there just for a, a picnic. He's gone up and worked hard all day, toiled away in the hot weather. Oh, he showed his class for sure. And Horn. Last minute of the game. Can they jack 50 here, PNG? Lachlan Lamb with a kick. It's a fraction too long. And uh, neither team in, in any great hurry to uh, to finish the last 30 seconds of this game. So PNG, uh, quarter finalists at the World Cup 12 months ago, have returned to Port Moresby and have not a pretty healthy victory here against the Cook Islands. They've, they've looked uh, like they've got a little bit of class at various times. Up against the Cook Islands outfit that, uh, well, they were at a great disadvantage in the outset. They lost their half back to to HIA in the first set of the game. So, Port Moresby will be happy. The Cummels have come away with victory. 46 points to 10.